Hi everybody, Jonathan here with another VetDuit's video and today we're going to be looking at some of the new features that were added in VetDuit's Service Pack 3. Now as you know with new subscriptions on VetDuit's now that means there's going to be a lot more regular updates coming through the year rather than just sort of waiting for the Big Bang uh, on the new release and this is definitely one of the benefits of subscription. So let's have a look at this one, it's definitely one of my personal favourites. It's all about view transitions, uh, making little animations and basically using Vectorworks as the fantastic presentation tool that it is. So I'm going to demo this with one of my uh, own personal projects for an eco home I did a few years ago and I really do hope you enjoy the video. Now if you are new around here please like and subscribe, it's really helpful to the channel and let's get going, enjoy the video. Okay everybody, so let's get going on this new Vectorworks video looking at the view transitions. Now I'm just going to use a project that I did a few years ago uh, which was for a really nice sort of eco home. Um, did manage to actually get planning for this now so that's really exciting. It was a lovely little project and one that I thoroughly enjoyed doing. You can see um, it was a really kind of like contemporary design set on a kind of standalone fairly flat site um, but basically what we did was sort of do an interesting sort of form of the building and it had a couple of stories that you can see here. Um, if I actually turn off the top story here, basically you can see here's the site just on its own. Um, and then, you know, let's turn on the building which was referenced on. There's the roof as well. And you can see how it kind of stacked up quite nicely. Okay, so let's have a look at this uh, first feature. So if I go up to my save views, you'll notice I've actually got three save views already. Okay, so I'll show you how I've created these in a moment. Basically, if I click onto these save views, you can see at the moment it just kind of spins between them fairly rapidly with um, a standard sort of animation that Vectorworks introduced. Now previously, there was no way to control this animation unless you knew about something called scripting which was a little bit beyond uh, the uh, sort of uh, skills for the average user, I would say. Let's have a look at how nice and easy this is to now adjust. So we've got a couple of options. If we do want to, we can adjust this globally or we can do it locally. Mm -hmm. To begin with, let's adjust it globally. So on the Mac, if you do command comma, that'll bring up your back to its preferences. Or if you go to tools, options, there we go, back to its preferences there. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is go through to the interactive section. Now, there's a lot of nice sort of settings that you can adjust here on the interactive section. And if you do want to, you might just a little reminder that you can actually kind of adjust things like all the colors as well. So sometimes what I actually do is sort of set this up for uh, different backgrounds and things like the uh, 3D views, I make white rather than slightly bluey and just adjust some of those settings. But that's nothing new, okay? So what is new is this bit here. You'll notice the default transition time is simply 0.3 seconds at the moment. There's also a nice little drop down here for motion as well. And basically what we can do, if we want to slow down the transitions, let's say we go for like uh, three seconds, we'll go for smooth and we can have a look at some of these different options in a minute. We'll click OK. And basically when we go through to our save views now, you'll now notice we get a gorgeous, very smooth little transition animation as we go between those two views. So this already is actually looking really, really nice. Um, sort of just giving me that nice sort of presentation capability. Now I'm gonna pop back into the preferences one more time. Keen to show you what the decelerate and accelerate does. Let's start with decelerate, click okay. And let's go back to our save view here. And you can see it basically, yeah, okay. So it really slows down as it kind of gets towards the last bit. Oh, I see, yeah, it really kind of slows down there. Let's compare that to the accelerate option. So pop back into our preferences, command comma on the Mac. Let's try the accelerate option, see if we can see a difference there. And another little tip, if I go down to my navigator, you'll see my save views down here, and I can just double click on those as well. Oh, I see, so with this one, actually it's accelerating the faster it goes. So it starts off nice and slow, and then goes a little bit quicker. Interesting. Yeah, okay, that's actually really nice. Okay, and then the final one, command comma, Let's just try this one, the linear one. I imagine what this will do is just transition um, the same speed all the time. So, not sure which one you prefer. Um, yeah, actually, I quite like the accelerated one. I also quite like the smooth one. So, that's looking really great already. I'm going to go back to smooth. 
Okay, now one thing that you can also do, let's have a look at how we can actually set up a brand new view. Okay, so let's say that I want to transition to now a uh, perspective view, which can look a bit more natural. So if I turn on normal perspective, okay, so I might need to uh, just adjust my camera view a little bit now. That's pretty nice. And a great tool for this, by the way, is if you drag off the uh, visualization palette, you really want to learn, let's just suppress that dialogue there, the dialogue for the walkthrough tool. Um, well worth learning the shortcuts here, so Shift and U. So let's go Shift U for my walkthrough tool, then we can get rid of that visualization palette. I'm just going to turn off the auto save for the rest of this session as well. Okay, so here we are in my settings here. So now, basically with Shift and U, which is a bit of a stretch, I can actually use my moving around and almost animate in real time, to be honest. So that's very cool. And I'll show you the other controls here in a minute. But let's go ahead and set up a new save view. So new, let's call this uh, V4. Okay, so, let's, so as you can see, when I jump from a orthogonal view down to a perspective view, there is a bit of a jump. Okay, but all we need to do now is basically set up an additional perspective view. So let's kind of move forward the building a bit here. And let's right click, click new, let's do V5. Okay, let's go through a bit for, for forward. Let's do one more, V6. And maybe we'll spin around and kind of come back out a bit more and look at the kind of whole project as well. So that's nice. Let's do one more, let's call this V7. Okay, so what you're gonna find is, once I go from V4, it's very smooth, to V5, to the next one, again, it's nice and smooth, to V6, a bit further forward, and then to V7, view seven, panning back out. So do bear that in mind, you can't transition from um, orthogonal views to perspective with the smooth transition, but that's fair enough. I'm not sure how to possibly calculate that. You can also do things like this. So let's put this into the top view. Okay, and let's zoom in a bit here. It's actually really nice. So I'm gonna go for this one. Let's call this uh, V8. Okay, and then I'm actually gonna hit the U key, uh, the C key rather, on my keyboard, and I'm just gonna navigate in to my plan and let's just pan that down a bit here and let's just call this v9 okay and now what we'll do is we'll spin around to maybe the front of the building so this is actually really useful i'm going to click onto my pivot point here anchor that onto the building so that i can kind of really kind of pivot around get a nice sort of front view of that building just over the trees and let's go to v10 okay so let's have a look at those last few views so we go from V6, which was that front view, to V7, which was that pulling back view there, which is actually really nice. Down over to the plan. I really like the way it transitions to top plan. And then zooming into the top plan. Again, that's really nice, zooming in with perspective. And then finally through to our front view there. So these are looking fantastic. I'm very happy with these save views. Um, I will just make the point, if you do want to, let's just say I want to transition a bit more slowly between those last two. I can just basically pop in there. Rather than the vector as preference, which was the three second we set globally, I can basically go down and let's change that to, uh, let's go for eight seconds. Okay, so now watch. When we go from V8, quite rapid, that's three second transition. Go to V9, it's going to be a really nice, long, slow eight second transition as it animates between them. And then finally, we'll go to V10. We're going to get that really nice, smooth animation. Now, this is actually pretty impressive. This is running on my MacBook Pro. You can see I've got all these trees in the model with um, basically shadows on as well. I haven't got ambient occlusion on right now, but I could do if I wanted. And basically, you know, I can kind of set up any view I like here in super quick time. So if I was sort of presenting this scheme to the client, um, as I've done, you know, many times over the years since the pandemic, particularly, I've been basically doing a lot of Zoom presentations to my clients um, rather than sort of real life meetings. It saves a lot of time for everybody involved. They really kind of enjoy uh, this kind of presentation style, basically using the 3D model. Now, one extra little tip I really wanted to give you was um, if you want to, you can also incorporate this with the clip cube. So let's go up to our clip cube, click onto the clip cube. And this is nice because basically now I can sort of sort of bring that down through the roof perhaps and sort of spin around to this floor here, just the first floor. Let's just sort of center up my drawing a bit more. I think I'll just zoom in a bit here for you. 
and just let's hold spacebar down and just pan that view. Okay, so we're going to go for let's call this V12. Okay, and let's now take our clip cube down a bit further into the ground floor. And I'm going to see what happens if I spin around the view a little bit. And let's just sort of recenter that for you there. Okay, so that's interesting. We're looking down now. Let's go for V13. Okay, so let's take a look at these last view. So V11, that was our previous view. Then we've got V12, which is the section view. So it turns that section on. And then we go down a bit lower and we animate around there. One thing I would personally love to see is the animated section moving through the model. Um, so that's not something I've found a way to do just yet. So maybe that's something for the future as well. But what do you think? I think this is an extremely nice way to sort of represent uh, things like the plans. So one of the final things I just want to touch on before we look at some uh, final animations and rendered outputs is the wonderful RenderWorks camera. So the nice thing with the RenderWorks camera, you can pretty much place it anywhere you would like on the site. And it's just a point and shoot affair. Very straightforward. We can make some adjustments here. And you'll notice also, uh, if you do want to, you've got all of those adjustments over in the object info palette. So you can be quite accurate with the sort of things like the field of view and the crop size and so on as well. So definitely encourage you to have a look at the camera. We've got different film sizes. Now, if you double click, you'll get that particular camera view. Let's use our rendering shortcut, Command Shift G to render that up with shaded perspective view. Okay, so here we are in this particular view. You can now see that if we want to, if we actually move forward, so I'm gonna use Shift and U, I'm gonna basically, let's just do a save view of that one. Let's just call it E for external, let's call this number one. Okay, and let's move through a little bit to our building. And it's gonna go through into these doors here. We'll do one more there. Let's go ahead and right click, make one more view here. Let's call this E2. And finally, let's navigate into our sort of space. So here you can see we are inside the building. Okay, so I've now set up a nice view in the lounge area. And basically, you can see that I can simply use my walkthrough tool to sort of walk around in real time. I'm actually put the edges on. Okay, so to do that, you just pop up into the shaded options and just notice how I can just add those edges to give a bit more sort of definition to the graphic. Again, the reason I'm doing this because I haven't really focused on the lighting and things like reflections and so on as well. And um, that's cool. Okay, so here's a few views that I've set up. So if I do double click onto those views, you can see we get this nice little smooth transition. And then zooming in, sort of focus on the kitchen for the client. Let's just do one more. Um, so I'll do Shift and C. And I think I'll just sort of pan that view around. In fact, I'll use my walkthrough tool. Okay, because that's quite a nice one. There's a different mode. This is actually a really useful mode on that second one because basically this will keep the point of view the same. Okay, as if you're standing looking, okay, with the eye, that makes it quite natural. Okay, so let's go ahead, let's do new, let's do I4 for this one, and let's pan around again. So left click, pan around to that nice view of the sort of stairwell. Yeah, looking really good. I think we'll go around a bit more to there as well. Okay, so new, let's do I5. Okay, so now let's look at our last few views. We go from that nice sort of kitchen view, animated there, round to the next view there that I want to show to the client, a nice lounge area, look out onto the garden. And finally, the view sort of looking back over the lounge up to the stairs. So do remember, if you do want to, you can right click, edit any of those. Um, we can change that to a custom transition and add in maybe a bit more time. So now that, you know, these will be nice and smooth, these transitions with a bit sort of five second transition time. Okay, so now we've got our save view set up. One extra little cool feature that I'd love to show you is just how you can basically easily create an animation. Um, you can do this from a path that you've drawn um, and that's actually really useful for walking around the building. But let's go for this nice simple one, create walkthrough path from save views. So you'll see that it will always remind you that you need to be in perspective mode. So that's fine, that's fair enough. And basically here are a few of our views. So I think I'll just select these three which was the nice smooth walk up to the kitchen. We'll click OK. OK, so now you can see uh, in Object Info, we've got an animation path available. So if I do want to, I can click Activate View, which is obviously the same view as pretty much I've got there. But what's important now is I can put some time in here. Let's go for like, say, 10 seconds, and I can click Play. So you can see we've actually got a nice sort of actual animation. 
And the beauty with this is we can kind of adjust the timing and we can kind of render this out when we're ready. So that's actually really nice. So if I do want to render this out, I can simply go create movie. Let's just drag the dialogue across. And over here, you'll notice a couple of extra cool things, um, as well as actually introducing all the different render settings. If I had a bit more time, I could render final quality. I'd definitely do some of those for you sometime. Um, that'll be fun to do. But let's keep it simple today. I could actually render on the Vectorworks Cloud. That's also something I'm keen to show you, how you can use your renders um, via the cloud to offload the computing. But here we go, we'll do 4K. And let's just click Save Movie. And it'll ask us probably where to save it to. Yeah, let's just go for this. Um, just keep an eye on where it's going. So going into my cloud services folder, let's just call this Eco Home. And basically off we go. Now that will basically render out. Um, it will be probably take a few moments to actually kind of render at all of those frames, but it'll be pretty zippy to be fair. And when I, you know, able to, I'll look at this whole quality. You can see it's kind of going to start ripping through those in a second. And we'll come back and review this at the end of the video in a moment. Okay, so we've had a quick look at the first animation. I'm going to render out some more of these, but there's one final feature I just want to show you before we kind of take a look at the final outputs. So if you go up to the window, there's a really cool little feature called Hide Enabled Palettes. Now a bit of a uh, unwieldy shortcut, but well worth learning. So Command Alt Shift H. So let's go for that shortcut on the keyboard there. And you can see I've now hidden all of my palettes. So now basically I can use my drop down to access all of these save views. And I'm in full screen mode. Now this is super nice. You can see I can animate round to any of those views. Let's jump back outside. Remember it will always do a quick jump when you go from an orthogonal view. To a perspective view but once you're going from orthogonal view to other orthogonal views that works absolutely fine so i think when i go to this one next time the v4 that'll be a jump okay yeah that's fine we were going from orthogonal to perspective when i go to v4 to v5 we're back into view transitions and nice and smooth so very very cool um i really like this full screen mode and you can basically pop in and out of that anytime you want to but it's just a great way to present to your clients over Zoom. To be honest, it's even a great way just to record some animated sort of visuals without going through the process of setting up things like the cameras as well. So what do you think, everybody? I hope you enjoyed this video. It's certainly been a fun one to make. So thanks for watching. I'll be making loads more videos soon. So make sure if you are new around here, drop a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.